I'm practicing to take the BU Fundamentals exam. This video is about a progressive stop shot drill that appears in that exam. This is today's drill. On the right hand side are instructions for setting it up. I'm going to show you my first attempt at the drill. I'm going to show you some practicing that I did to identify weaknesses and make some improvements. And then I'm going to show you my final attempt. At the end, I'll discuss some lessons learned and some things that I need to work on. And with that being said, let's get to my garage. Okay, this is my first attempt at this drill. The very first thing I wanna do is I wanna point out something that's purely mechanical. Uh, look at my right hand, how I'm holding the cue. See those two fingers pop out? That's actually something I started doing a few, few years ago when I was working on my mechanics and trying to eliminate variation in my stroke and also in my Q-tip placement. I was noticing my Q-tip was moving all over the place as I stroked and uh, Anyway, did a little research on it. I finally figured out I was holding the cue too tightly. And what I eventually did is decided to uh, only use one finger to hold my cue. So I really only used my middle finger, uh, my birdie finger, to hold my cue. Uh, the rest of my fingers uh, are really, they're just, they're just along for the ride. So that's, uh, that's one thing that I do to help to reduce variation. Okay, let's talk about the drill. So this is actually a really simple setup. There are only uh, two donuts that are on the table. Uh, and first donut marks the object ball location, which is right next to the pocket. And the other donut is the target. So what you're trying to do in this drill is you're trying to make the object ball and then have the cue ball stop, uh, ideally right on top of that second donut. Now it doesn't have to be exactly on top. Uh, the diameter of a cue ball is about two and a quarter inches. So as long as the final resting spot of the cue ball is within two and a quarter inches of that second donut, then it's considered a successful attempt. Uh, if it rolls off any, any further, then it's considered a miss. So again, uh, all we're trying to do is control uh, the stop shot and make the cue ball stop within a certain area. All right, here comes a bonus tip. This is related to a pre-shot routine. Watch what I do right here when I start to get down to shoot. Oops. Yeah, I started to get down and my brain went, no, 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 something's wrong. And you've got to learn to listen to your brain when it does that. A lot of times you don't know why, you don't feel comfortable, but something just doesn't feel right. Always stand up, reset, and re-get into position again. All right, here's the final shot. The pressure is on. If I make this one shot, I will finish my first attempt with a perfect score, which I've never done before. So I'm under pressure. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I can't believe I missed that shot. Unbelievable. Okay, here's the practice that I did after my first attempt. I decided to take 10 shots from each cue ball position. The cue ball you see right now is currently at position four. Positions five, six, and seven would be further to the left of this position four. So I'm gonna shoot this first shot, and then I'm gonna speed up the video because I know you guys don't wanna watch this real time. It'll take a lot of time. So we're gonna go really fast and 
The one other comment that I would have on uh, the practice is about halfway through the practice session, I think I just lost focus and I missed like five or six straight shots in a row. And then I got serious again and, you know, really focused and made a bunch of shots uh, straight in a row. But then near the end, slacked off again. Uh, that's kind of a lesson learned for me. Uh, I just need to work on maintaining focus. And don't know if you guys have the same issues, but um, it's, it's a pretty common thing, at least for me. Okay, this is my final attempt at the drill. I'm starting with cue ball position four. And I'm gonna speed this up between shots. But I did have a tip I wanted to share with you. It's a mechanical pre-shot um, item. If you look at when I have my cue tip up against the cue ball, look at my right forearm. When my tip is against the ball, my right forearm is vertical. It's almost uh, exactly straight up, straight down. And this is actually a really good feature from a biomechanical standpoint because if your arm is in that position at the point that the Q-tip strikes the cue ball, this is the point at which there's the least amount of variation in your Q-tip location. So you're minimizing Q-tip motion as you contact the cue ball and that will make your shots more accurate. And of course, as soon as I say that, I make the shot, but I'm in this position. Oh well, that's life, huh? And now I've missed two shots in a row. So that is not good. So basically at this point, in order for me to get the maximum score of 10, I'm gonna to have to hit five, well now four shots straight in a row, no misses, in order to get the 10. No pressure at all. All right, here is the final shot. I have to make this shot to get a 10, otherwise I end up with an eight. So pretty critical shot. Did I make it? That is close. Gonna have to measure it. Lessons learned. Overall, my pre-shot routine is much improved from the first video in this series. I've also gotten a lot better with the elbow drop issue that I had, although it did show up occasionally here and had a negative impact on some of my shots. The biggest issue that I identified this week was another inconsistency in my pre-shot routine. This time it was related to my head and eye movement. I know you can't see my eyes in this video, but if you look closely, you can see my head moves slightly just prior to each shot. This head movement itself is not necessarily a bad thing. The reason that I'm doing this is because I just started wearing glasses and I'm struggling a little bit with the transition in my near and far vision. I can't just rotate my eyes up to look from the cue ball to the object ball like I used to. Uh, I now have to move my whole head slightly. 
On some shots, I move my head up and then immediately shoot the shot, which is not good. And on other shots, you'll see me move my head up and then there's a pause and then I shoot the shot. This pause is a positive because it gives my arm muscles time to transition from the backwards motion of the stroke to the forward motion. And it also gives my eyes time to refocus from the cue ball to the object ball. While putting this video together, I also noticed there were occasions when I poked instead of stroked. So I'm going to continue to work on my stroke as well. Billiard University was formed in 2012 by Dr. Randy and Dr. Dave, and their goal was to help pool players improve. They do this by providing skill assessment tools and resources that can really help your game. They currently offer six different exams for assessing your pool playing ability. But for this video series, I'm just focused on the drills that are associated with exam one. There are several benefits of taking the BU exams. For one, you will be able to get a sense of how good of a player you are based on your overall exam scores. Here's an example scale. You can also watch YouTube videos of some of the top pros taking the same exact exams that you can take. And here's a fun thing. Billiard University periodically sponsors contests where you can win money based upon how well you do on the drills. So what are you waiting for? You should also be taking these exams. If you enjoyed this video and want me to make more videos like this, please subscribe. Also hit the like button. Feel free to leave me a comment or a suggestion for future video topics. Stay safe and shoot well.